Incentive theory is very much at the core of economics. We believe that if we give people the appropriate incentives, those incentives will induce the right amount of effort. Unfortunately, incentives in many occasions have unintended consequences. Those consequences are mostly visible when the incentives are, as we call them, asymmetric. Now, what do I mean by asymmetric investing? Suppose that we reward somebody for good performance, but we don't punish them enough for bad performance. Well, then what effect will that have? The effect that such an incentive scheme will have is that that person will have an increased appetite for risk compared to the investors that he or she is representing. The aspect that I was intrigued by is that this basic intuition, which at its core is a correct one, has the shortcoming that it is a very static intuition. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that if we thought that the world is made up of a situation where two people meet each other, um, one person, say the fund manager, goes and makes an investment decision, it's a one-shot game and never meets the investor again, yes, the intuition that I just described would correctly describe the incentives of that manager to take on too much risk on their investments. However, in reality, things are more complex. Interactions are not just one-shot interactions. They are repeated interactions. People go on and have repeated relationships with their managers for an unspecified period of time, an undetermined period of time. If one goes down that logic, then things become more complicated. The easiest way to explain how repeated interactions between people create additional complications is through an example. Okay, and the example that we choose in the paper is one where we're thinking of a specific contract that is very prevalent in the hedge fund industry, and that's the high watermark contract. Suppose that you give somebody some money, say you give them $100, and he's, that person is a hedge fund manager. If by next year they manage to bring that amount of money to say something like 120, then of that increase, the $20 increase, they get to keep a percentage. If, however, they lose money, okay, the next year they're not going and say the $100 becomes 80, then they don't make anything. And they have to wait until that $80 again grows above 100 and then they start getting again a percentage of the increase they achieve every year. Suppose, however, that this contract is on an indefinite horizon. Suppose that this person expects that next year he's again going to be facing an investment decision and he's going to still be running that fund. Now the incentives change. Because if that person takes on too much risk this year, yes, the good outcome for that person would be that he, he or she exceeds the high watermark and makes some money. But what happens if they don't achieve a good outcome? If they don't achieve a good outcome, the next year they're starting from a much worse position than they were the year before. Okay. So because we are in this indefinite horizon setup, the fact that the contract doesn't immediately get terminated and the thing that happens is the terms of the contract become less beneficial if that person takes too much risk that doesn't pay off, then starting from next year onwards, the possibility that he's going to be starting from a worse position creates a sufficient disincentive to take risk that disciplines that person to not overdo it with risky investments. So that is the idea in a nutshell. The basic takeaway is that, yes, of course, the asymmetric nature of many of these incentive schemes we observe in reality should make us worried, should make us potentially worried that they create the wrong incentives to take risks for managers. However, in evaluating real-world schemes, we should also be taking into account the fact that the long-term nature of those contracts provides an inherent disincentive to take risks. So really, once you think about policy questions, like how should we structure the compensation of people, how should we make sure that they don't take too much risk, one aspect is the asymmetric nature of the contract that we should be looking at very carefully. 
But another aspect is whether these contracts induce short-termism, whether these contracts make investors just think that this is a one-shot game where they can maximally profit from the asymmetric nature of the payoff, or whether it's a long-term interaction, in which case, if they do something that creates too much risk today, they're going to be facing the consequences tomorrow.